Hey friends, welcome to Make Anything. It's Devin here. And well, we're about halfway through the year 2020. It's a crazy year. And it's certainly not showing any signs of slowing. Where are we going? So today we're gonna make a UFO because why not aliens? Cool. Today we're gonna to be doing a project I've been hoping to try for a while, and that is to basically deck out my drone and make it look like something else. In today's case, a UFO. And the DJI Mavic Pro here is an awesome drone. I really like it because it's a lot easier to fly than some other drones. But that said, it's certainly not designed for this project because DJI specifically discourages users from adding anything to the drone. So it's not made for carrying a payload. But that said, I've seen some other YouTubers test it out and I know it can carry at most two pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I think we can still do quite a bit because we're gonna be using a 3D pen. After my review of the Mint 3D Super Pen, a lot of you were asking me to review the Mint 3D Professional Pen, which I got here. And I think it's actually the ideal tool for this job because while well, 3D printed and 3D pen objects are generally really lightweight, so while two pounds doesn't seem like a lot, it's nearly a full kilogram spool of filament. And that's actually a lot of material. So I think we can pull this off but um, you know, it's not just about weight, it's also about balance. And creating a perfectly balanced object with a 3D pen may not be that easy, but hey, it wouldn't be fun if it was too easy, right? So well, why don't I give you a quick test flight? I've never flown this thing indoors, but I gotta show you what it's capable of, right? Hopefully I won't crash this right at the beginning of the video. Oh, it's a lot scarier to do this indoors. Oh, all right, that's enough of that. It works. So, now I'm just gonna go ahead, throw it on the scale, figure out the starting weight, and then we can start building. All right, let's zero out my little postage scale here. And the scale reads one pound, 10.15 ounces, which is just over 1.6 pounds. So there's our starting weight. All right, now let's go ahead and open up our Mint 3D Professional 3D printing pen. Inside, we've got some sample ABS filament, standard documentation, plugs and cables, the basic tools, and of course, the pen itself. Pretty much everything that came with my other Mint 3D pen but the difference here is that we now have an OLED display as well as precise temperature control down to the degree. So with it set to ABS, I can up the temperature all the way to 230 degrees Celsius. That's the max. And hopefully that's gonna work out for the CPE filament that I've decided to use. This is filamentum CPE to be exact. And I decided to go with this since CPE should have pretty good impact strength Plus, I really just like these translucent colors. So I'm gonna start out by loading up some of this black CPE and running the pen until that black starts to come out. And it looks like it's coming out pretty smoothly. So this CPE filament just might work with the 3D pen. So that works. Now we've got our Mavic Pro, a very expensive drone. I guess we just gotta start drawing on it. I decided to start by just following some of the seams and edges of the Mavic Pro. I'm just gonna work my way around and kind of make sure that the pen wraps itself around the front as well as the back so that it really holds onto the drone. And I'm not exactly sure what plastic this drone is made of, but I'm pretty sure it's not CPE and I'm hoping that the plastics don't fuse together so that I can actually remove this. So I should probably test that before we get too far. And luckily, with just a little bit of wiggling around, I was able to pull off the 3D pen frame in its entirety. 
and it's a bit floppy, but it seems sturdy. And in this state, I can actually pop it on and off of the drone. I wasn't sure I'd be able to do that, but that will be really nice. So I'm just gonna keep adding on to this frame, kind of bisecting these edges with other edges, and then I'll bisect those edges with some more edges, plus a bit of decoration with these pink dots. And yes, it still pops off. So this is actually a pretty awesome way to make a case for this drone because 3D modeling something that fits this well would be quite the challenge. Plus, since this is removable, I can actually weigh it on its own, so that makes things a little easier as well. All right, so now that I have this basic case that holds onto my Mavic Pro, I have to start figuring out how I'm gonna actually use that to hold on to the rest of my UFO structure. And I'm kind of figuring things out as we go here. I decided to bring out my 3D Mate mat so that I could make some relatively precise parts using these grooves. So here I'm gonna create these narrow rectangles which are a quarter inch wide and five inches long. And I can also fill them in with these little triangular truss supports. Then once those are cooled down, I'll take three of them and melt them together with the 3D pen. These triangular rods are quite resistant to any bending, but they're also extremely lightweight, which is exactly what I need for my UFO. So I ended up creating a whole bunch of these just because I know I'm gonna need several to connect my entire UFO frame to the drone. Next up, I decided to bring out this old paper template that I created for another 3D pen project of mine because I realized this is pretty ideal for figuring out the sizes of the circles I need so I placed my drone in the center of this template with the blade stretched out and basically figured out the smallest circle that I could have that would surround the drone without hitting the blades or anything like that. At this point, I was hoping that I could actually use the raw filament as is to create these rings so that I don't have to do quite so much 3D pen work. So I taped down my template and I also taped down two of these rolls of filament side by side and then I got my 3D pen out again, loaded with some of that black CPE filament, and I started joining my two spools of filament together just with these little tiny supports. At the start here, you'll notice that the spacing between these supports is pretty inconsistent. I was really just figuring things out as I went along and trying to figure out exactly how far apart I need these supports to be to create a nice ring. But soon enough, I figured out my rhythm and I just kept on adding and adding to this ring until the two ends met up into this complete circle. Then I went in and added a third length of filament to once again create a triangular truss rod system so that this ring isn't quite so floppy. This is definitely time consuming and still a bit sloppy, but I was hoping it would be precise enough to keep my structure relatively balanced. So I made this one big ring, and then I made two more, slightly smaller rings, in hopes of combining those with those truss rods I created to create my saucer shape. Again, I wasn't using any precise tools here. I'm pretty much eyeballing things, but I was doing my very best just to keep things even and symmetrical. And I think I did a pretty good job with this general saucer shape. Once that was done, I put the drone inside and started connecting additional rods to the drone itself so that everything would be supported as one continuous structure. I gave it some landing legs as well, and then I created another ring for the bottom just to keep adding strength and rigidity to this structure because at this point it was still a bit floppy. Surprisingly enough, I was still able to take this whole structure off of the drone. And at this point, it still only weighed a third of a pound. So that was really promising. Still, before I got too far, I thought this might be a good time for a test flight. So I went ahead to set this up outside on a nice hot summer day and fired up the drone. I really had no idea how well this thing would fly at this point, and I was kind of skeptical, but sure enough, it took off. And even despite a mild breeze, this thing actually looked kind of stable. I was able to hover relatively in place, move forwards, backwards, left and right, spin around, do all that good stuff, 
I was even able to pull off these somewhat drastic maneuvers. So I got back to work with a huge confidence boost after that test flight, and I pretty much went ahead and added the entire rest of my structure. First I went around the saucer one more time to increase the density of that structure, and I just added a few more truss supports just to make things as stable as possible. And then I decided I just had to have a nice big dome on top of my UFO because I really wanted to get that classic UFO look. I knew this would make my whole UFO a little bit more top heavy, but after that first test flight I figured this drone could probably handle it. So I used that paper template of mine to create a whole bunch of arcs, and then I welded those together with the pen to create this beautiful half sphere dome. And if you're thinking this looks like an insane amount of work, you're definitely right. I was pretty much hunched over this desk working with my 3D pen for three continuous days. But eventually, I had my UFO, and it looked so good. That said, I knew this thing would be a little trickier to fly because of that big dome on top, so I cleared out some space indoors where there's no breeze, so I could do a quick test hover. So it still got off the ground and hovered, but it was definitely a bit more wobbly this time and I could hear it clipping somewhere so I knew I'd have to do a bit more work. That said I wanted to do one more quick hover just so I could figure out exactly where it was hitting. All it took was a few seconds of panic, and this thing completely crumpled on the ground. Despite it being such a short flight, the blades of my Mavic Pro really tore through the UFO, and pretty much every ring was broken in one spot or another. Oh man, I gotta say, this one, this one hurt. Having worked on this thing non-stop for three days and then watching it crash and burn in like 15 seconds, that was tough. And it's actually been three months since that crash. I just had to step away from it. Now looking back, it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I think this was just one case where I got a little too confident after that first test flight and I added a whole bunch more, specifically this giant dome on top and I'm pretty sure that was the downfall. This thing made it way too top heavy. I guess I was just hoping the Mavic Pro could compensate for those instabilities, but clearly it wasn't quite strong enough, but it did survive. So I guess it's a good thing that the UFO crashed from three feet off the ground instead of after I took it 100 feet into the air. So there is some silver lining. Also, the real clear winner of this video, I think is the Mint 3D Professional Pen because I've never put any 3D pen through this much stress, this much continuous use at the maximum temperature that the pen can handle, and it didn't give me any problems. So I'm kind of stunned about that. Believe it or not, the dome itself took about 10 hours of near continuous use at max temperature with a material that this pen isn't designed to use, and it still pulled it off with no problems. So even though I've only used it for this project, this thing has jumped to the top of my 3D pen list pretty much instantly. So where do we go from here? Well, I think this video is long enough and you know, it's about time that I share one of my spectacular failures. But I also feel like this project has so much potential and now that it's been a while, I feel like I can come back and try to fix it. It does look like this structure here is beyond repair. It would just add too much weight if I tried to fix every broken part. So I am gonna have to revisit this entirely, but maybe that's a good thing. I think I'm gonna incorporate some 3D printing as well as the 3D pen, and hopefully that can get things working a little bit better. If you guys have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. I think I need all the help I can get with this thing, but I do look forward to revisiting this very soon, 
and sharing a functioning UFO with you guys in just the coming weeks. So if you want to see where this goes, make sure you're subscribed, maybe even hit that notification bell, like the video if you enjoyed what I've done so far, despite the failure. But that's it for today's video. So until the next one, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.